that song? Yeah. What's it called? Final. Yeah, it's what Jared plays on the toilet. Why do you know what he plays on the toilet? How do you know this? Not a word of a lie. <laughs> Have you heard this story? No. Do you want to hear this yeah. story? Yeah. I honestly forget where we were. But we had to go to the restroom. We were in a, a hotel or a, a, I think it was a convention. So we, uh, we found a, a public restroom, uh, walked in. We thought it was empty. Uh, he went into one stall, I went into another stall. We sat down. It was quiet. <laughs> then all of a sudden. <laughs> and I, in my stall, start to giggle. He hears me laughing and he starts to laugh. Then the stranger at the end of the bathroom <laughs> flushes the toilet and quickly exits the restroom. <laughs> and, and now that song is forever ruined <laughs> because of Mr. Pat Leggy. Um, one of the many stories that we have that, that will probably end up in one of our books at some point. Um, yeah, I'm not writing a book. Um, so I know that it was a pretty quick turnaround to get from the CW Upfronts in New York to come join us, and I'm curious, Jonas Brothers performed, and I wanted to know if you saw them, if you got the opportunity to see them perform, and if so, how did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> so not a word of a lie, uh, and I, I'll probably get uh, called out for saying this, but uh, I'll leave the names out of it, but it's probably pretty easy to figure out who it is. After the musical group exited stage, one of our executives walked onto stage and said, let's hear it for the Joneses' brothers. <laughs> and you saw all the other executives behind stage go, what the? <laughs> uh, so what they do, usually the way that thing works is, is they have all of the, the cast of all the shows in a, in a room that's a little smaller than this room here, and you know, coffee and, and and waters and stuff uh, there, we're all watching a, a monitor of what's happening on stage. So, I guess, yeah, I did see them, but on a TV, but everybody was talking, so I didn't really watch them. It was more for the audience that was out in the theater. Um, I think they played a couple of songs. Uh, I'm, I'm not their target demographic, <laughs> so I'm sure they're not gonna take offense to the fact that I wasn't paying attention. Uh, good for them. It looks like their careers are, are doing really well, and, and it, was, uh, it was nice to have somebody that's uh, relevant <laughs> other, other than, you know, not us. <laughs> we were talking about, Jared and I were talking about it, it was, it, it, it's interesting, he may, have, he may have touched on this. Has he had his panel yet? No. Well, then I'm gonna steal this story. Um, he, uh, we were, we were there in this room with all of this, all of the cast from all of the, the, the shows. Not all of the shows, but um, most of the, the, the shows for, uh, for our network. And the, the network traditionally skews uh, for a younger audience. And so a lot of the shows are, are, um, are designed to be just that. So it's a lot of young cast members. 
Jared said, I remember when I was the young one. <laughs> and, and I said, I know. And we're literally the same age as the ones that are like playing the fathers of the lead cast members now. <laughs> and um, we had this lovely young, uh, lovely young actress, Kennedy, who, who's playing Nancy Drew uh, in the new series, come up to us and she was like, I, you guys are legends. I, I, I've grown up watching you. Can I get a picture? <laughs> Can I get a picture with you for my father? And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did your father grow up watching this too? <laughs> um, no, but it, <laughs> in all seriousness, it, it, the, the talent, they, they, they paid us really, really great uh, compliments over the years. And, um, and we've got equally as, as great compliments from uh, the, the executives of the network who um, who tell us that we set a good example for those young uh, young actors <laughs> and and to me that's one of the best compliments I could receive um, that's something that that I know that Jared and I have, have always uh, strived to uh, to attain is is respect from the people that we worked with and, and, and our peers um, to set a good tone on set. Um, we can't control a lot, but that we can't control. And so we, we, we try to do the same. We try to do the same here as well. Um, you know, we, we try to, to set a tone of, of, of fun, uh, engagement, um, professionalism, friendliness, compassion, love and when you when you check those boxes uh, in, a, in a work setting it's amazing the kind of work you can get done uh, and it's also amazing the kind of friends you can make and so we get to we get to be benefits of that when we're on our set but peripherally we get to see that be an example for these new shows and these younger actors and actresses that are coming up and and to me that's really important uh, and I'm, I'm proud that, that we've at least achieved uh, somewhat of that. So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. We're very proud of you guys. Thank you. with you, yeah. except when they surround me and threaten me. Look at your feet, behind your feet. Turn around. Yeah. 
them around? Yeah, the, it is yeah? a unicorn balloon. No, no the, the, the stick. stick. The stick? Okay. <laughs> and you can kill... You can kill... Why would I want to kill a unicorn? <laughs> Like this, you, it's fine. I want to kill you. I like unicorns. You know? You know how often I have to answer the question, are unicorns real? And now I get to show my daughter a video of me doing this. See, unicorns can't be destroyed, though. No matter how hard you hit them. Not yet. Still, still together. They're magical, magical creatures. They're magically delicious. That exist in, 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 real, in real time and in real life. They're just... You never know if it's a horse or if the horse is hiding its horn. Because they have to be very quiet because there's a lot of people out there that want to hurt them. No, no, no. And what happens is you really can't hurt them. And it's for kids. Kids are to break them. Where is that coming from? Like the day you were born. I feel like it's staring at me. This doesn't work. It works. Oh, it does it? It doesn't. It works for Graham. I feel like this is uh what? Step on it. Step on it. Step on it? No. no. I can't even like look me. at it when I'm like hitting it. It's like I feel really horrible. Man. It's like I'm breaking like a, a beautiful piece of art. Infinity. Oh, I'm gonna take this one off. Clearly, the unicorn wins. <laughs> This one wins. Your things about Dean? About Dean? Um, I think we, I, and this is this is really boils down to a cost issue. I feel like we we miss hearing Dean's music as much as we used to. Um, I, I would have liked to have explored a little bit more of Dean's, uh, although we know what genre it is. Just kind of hearing a little bit more of that uh, be a soundtrack to, to his life and to the, to the brother's journey. Um, also, I think that uh, um, we should probably have a scene or two with uh, a cat and see what happens. Maybe there's some, maybe there's some stuff left over from Yellow Fever that we haven't tapped into. That could be funny. Uh, there's there's a lot we haven't uh, um, discovered about Dean, but I think there's a lot that we have, and uh, and I'm thankful for that because I think he's a very complex character. I think he's a he's a he's a very real character. Um, you know, he's not uh, a lot of characters, at least that I see. And this is this might just be a, a product of, of the amount of time that we're we're allowed to spend with them. You know, in a movie, you only get maybe 90 minutes, maybe maybe 120 minutes. Um, but those characters have very little time to really kind of unfold as much as Dean has gotten to unfold over the past 14 years. And and I like I like the fact that I've had 
the opportunity to be able to discover this character along the way and, and rediscover this character and reinvent this character uh, almost on an annual basis. Um, and it's something that, that, like I said earlier in this, this morning with Jared, it's, it's something that will forever live with, with me. Um, but we got, we got 12 more months to discover something new about him, so. Which, don't get me started. I, I can't. Game of Thrones fans? Anyway. So, no, you guys don't watch it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I wish I could, like, hear your opinion. We're not going to hear, we're not here to have a Game of Thrones discussion, but I would like to have one. Do you want to hear my theory on what's going to happen? Just real quick, okay. and I'm sorry, I know it was about Peaky Blinders, and I'm, yes, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what the Shelbys do. I really am, because Thomas Shelby's one of my favorite characters. Uh, but I just kind of have to say this. I think, <laughs> I think, I think Tyrion's gonna kill Daenerys. Yeah! Why? Why? Yes. Because he was wrong. Yes. He's wrong. Yes. And he watched. Why he watched his friend die. Why too? Yeah. He watched his friend die. He was wrong. And it's the it's the the ultimate redemption for his character, for all the things that he's done, is to put Snow on the throne. But whether or not Snow makes the throne, I don't know. Uh, Anyway, that's that's my thoughts on I give it thrones and we'll find out tomorrow night. You know, it used to uh Thank you. Uh it 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 used to come from some place other than the show, uh which is a, a common, I think, acting thing. Maybe it's not, I don't know. I, I've never I've never been trained properly or professionally uh, or at all. Um, I, I'm untrained. I'm wild. Uh, but for me personally, just being able to, to tap into certain emotions, uh, you know, in the very beginning of the show, it's like maybe I use something from my personal experience. Um, now I don't have to do that because I've lived with this character and I've lived with these relationships for so long that I can, I can just simply think about what it would be like for this character to go through what he's going through and that brings the emotion right there. Whenever I have a, an emotional scene with, with Jared or, or, or with Misha, when we're, when we're in those characters, we're in those moments, um, you know, I am Dean. And and he and he is Sam and he is Cass and she is Mary and she is Charlie and like those 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 relationships are real uh, because they also exist off camera in a certain extent. You know these are these are very dear friends of mine and if a dear friend of yours comes to you and says they're dying or if you lose someone like that. Um, that brings up real emotion, and the craziest thing is, is when you're when you're acting, when you're when you're doing these these scenes, you're telling your body that this is real. You're telling your body that 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 your brain is. I mean, brain is an incredible an incredible thing, and, and the fact that it can it can tell your body to do something and to react to something that isn't real, even though you know it's not real, you can you can it, you can tap into emotions. That, that that would only happen if it was real, and I don't I don't know if that's a certain gift or a talent or just a messed up way of using your brain wrong, but uh, it is uh, it, it, it's it's difficult to, to then turn that off uh, for me anyways. Some people can get into it and get out of it really quickly, but for me it's like getting into it. Uh, is one thing, but then then that becomes real because I'm telling myself that it's real, uh, and it's and I've talked about this before. Like the emotional stuff is very difficult 
um, because it's it's uh, those are, those are some of the moments in, that I remember the most because they have the biggest impact on my heart. So on a Monday or not? Am I singing a new song Monday? Yeah, during the Monday concert. Uh, yeah, I think we're singing a new song, uh, but it won't be one of my songs or Steve's. One of one of our songs, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're being very quiet today. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. on that real quick. Steve Carlson, who some of you may or may not know, a uh, dear friend of mine. Uh, he and I, um, we, we've been working on a music project for uh, uh, about, well, I say about eight months. Uh, he likes to say about 19 years. Feels like it. Yeah. Um, and uh, and, and we've, we finally started to record um, some music, uh, all completely original, um, all written and uh, produced by he and I. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll listen to it and be like, "This is crap. We're never releasing this." Um, or maybe we'll say, eh, "Let's see what we let's see what they think." We'll so punch you down if you do that. I know. So you know. I know. Um, yeah. So we're uh, we're working on that, and that's in the works, and we're getting close to uh, to printing. So we'll. I'll let you know. Hello? Um, I recently found an old interview of yours, uh, and you mentioned then, I think it was in the 90s, you mentioned that your most prized possession is a pink stuffed pig, and I thought that was really adorable, and I wanted to ask her, <laughs> does he still exist? Why did you mention him? Or her? Don't listen to her. <laughs> um, hmm. Really? Did I say that? <laughs> I mean, I know what I'm, I know what you're talking about. I can't believe that I actually like said that. That's a little embarrassing. Um, yeah, that was like something from my childhood. That was probably the only piece of my childhood that I I brought to California with me. Uh, everything else was just stuff uh, that I needed to, you know, survive. A bed, clothing dishes, a toothbrush, and that's about all I had. But then I had my, I had my little pink stuffed pig, which wasn't little, the thing was like this big. It was basically just a body pillow. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know why I decided to bring that, but it was like the one thing that just kind of reminded me of being young and a kid. And I think one day I grew up and got rid of it. And I don't know where, I, yeah, I, I think I tossed it. It probably smelled pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know my, my six-year-old, well, she's about to be six in two weeks. Uh, she, has, she has this little, like, stuffed thing that she, had, that she has that she calls baby. Uh, <laughs> not kidding. And when she was young, when she was... Uh, only a couple of years, this was, there were different variations of this one little stuffy thing, and it would, there was like the, the puppy, and then there was the rabbit, and then there was the raccoon, and the owl, whatever. But she gravitated towards this one particular one, and so we we're like, ooh, we should buy a few of those in case one goes missing. Well, she had used that one so much that it, the texture of the fabric became different than the other ones. So she could tell when she was like two years old. She was like, this is not baby. And I'm like, of course it is, this is our thing. It's just a, but you, you have to use this one in order for it to, can we just, no, it, it's in the wash, I'm washing. But no, that was the only one. So we've gotten rid of all those. There is one lone baby. And if we lose that, and she's six now. I mean, it's like, all right, we gotta like maybe get rid of this. And she's like, nope. 
So I have a feeling that might be going to college with her. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the story behind the, the pig. Uh, my question is, speaking of baby, you're gonna get baby after the show ends, so maybe uh, you'll get like uh, Jared on board and drive back to Texas and like film a road trip show. <laughs> Maybe. Pretty please. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Have the other baby in tow. <laughs> right. So when 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 ours breaks down after 200 miles, we can just rotate them. It's a tank waiting babies. We'll have like a full convoy of like mechanics. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the. Uh, that's not a bad idea, actually. That's, I'll think about that. Okay. Crying, death, <laughs> explosions. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. Uh, it'll be emotional, and I know it's two words, but action-packed. Strategery. Strategery. Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles dishing on the final season of Supernatural. What's the mindset going into the, the final season? Uh, try and do the show justice. You know, try and do these characters some, some justice and honor the, the legacy that was Supernatural. You know, the writers and the directors and the, the actors and actresses and producers and the, our network and our studio and just try and try and do well by the fandom, you know? Jared said it best. I don't think we'll ever say goodbye to these characters. I mean, I, I, I really, living with them for 15 years uh, is uh, only the start. You know, this is, um, who was it? I think, I think it was Stallone that said that, uh, to, to, the, to the greatest imaginary friend I've ever had, talking about Rocky Balboa. And, and I kind of feel the same way. Uh, you know, this, these, guys will, these guys will live with us for forever. You don't you dare think that there is anything past or present that I would put in front of you. The guys also went down memory lane talking about their early days on the show. It was almost 15 years ago. Um, yeah, it's my first childhood memory, actually, is <laughs> being on set. Basically, essentially, I remember just the feeling of uh, infinite possibilities. You know, I thought we might go for a full season, you know? Yeah. Oh, maybe we'll. <laughs> oh, maybe we'll go for season two. Maybe, yeah. Um, yeah. It was. You know, at that at that point, he and I were just really excited to to be a part of a show and to to be kind of captaining that show and and um, you know we didn't want to mess it up and it was also right during the whole merge of the network so there was a lot of changeover there was a lot of disruption going on and we weren't sure what the fate of our show was and so I think the fact that we went, somehow managed to weather that storm and, and get through the other side. Uh, was a big testament to kind of what we had. And, and then it was just not trying not to mess it up for the next 14 years. Well, we don't know the ending. We don't know what it yet. is yet. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, we, we, you know. I, mean, we, I don't think, I think to a certain degree, the fandom won't be happy with any ending. Right. <laughs> Nor will we to a certain degree. I don't think any of us want to see this show go. You know, it, but back to your earlier question, it's about doing it proper justice. And here's what they plan on stealing from set. I've said it before. For me, it's all about the car. You know, it's been such a heavy part of the character and, and, and a heavy part of the show. If somebody stole the Impala, what would you do? Murder. I'd murder them all. There's little knickknacks. Yeah. Little little mementos. Uh, that probably won't mean anything to anybody else, but probably but means something to me. Yeah. I remember when uh, when when we burned down Bobby's house. There was an owl paperweight on the fireplace. And I remember before we were gonna use the set for the last time, I was like, well, this is mine now, so I still have it. Yeah, our set deck department just realized where that went. And they're like, damn it, Jared. The, the legal team at Warner Brothers right. now like, cease and desist. Uh, I remember, like, yeah, little knickknacks, like the, the, the season finale of the, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the season finale of season one, um, Sam's driving the Impala. And I, I figured, again, we didn't know if we were getting picked up. Um, the car was getting destroyed. So there's this scene where I'm sitting there and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this. I took a little Impala decal out of that first car. Um, so I still have that. But little stuff that no one would ever know. It means something to me.